Hello again everybody and welcome to Back to Basics Gaming. We're playing Final Fantasy XIV and this is the Dungeon Boss Guide for the Stone Vigil. Now before we start talking about bosses and all that good stuff, let's talk about an important piece of trash that you're going to be seeing quite frequently in the dungeon. And that is our good friend here, the Dragon Avis. The Dragon Avis, he's annoying for two main reasons. One, he has an annoying AoE, and two, well, he's kind of a beefy fella, so he hits kind of hard. This can provide more unnecessary work for the healers, and, well, the tank will just kind of be getting his face beat in for nothing. So, it's up to the DPS to really focus and shift their attention onto the Dragon Avis. Taking them down as soon as possible is pretty much the main goal here, all the way up until the very end of the whole entire dungeon. So just keep at it and try and use stun attacks and stun skills whenever he's doing his AoEs. I'm looking at you, Dragoons. Keep it up and you'll do just fine. So now, after all that's been said, let's actually take a look at our very first boss of the dungeon. That is Chudo Yudo, which is kind of fun to say actually. Chudo Yudo. Try saying it. Well anyways, Chudo Yudo over here, he's really a basic dude and you know how I feel about basics I like it so here's the thing Chudo Yudo is pretty easy as far as grabbing his attention and tanking him however every now and again he will break away from the tank when this happens you want to be on his flank meaning you want to be on his side or you want to be behind him you pretty much want to be everywhere except in front of him and really that's kind of a golden rule with all boss fights well maybe not all but most boss fights. So make sure that you're always on his flank. And the reason as to why that is, especially when he breaks away from the tank, is that he does this massive conal AoE that will do massive damage. And if you just stand in front of him just normally, he also has a flame breath attack that just really, really hurts. So do yourself a favor, stay out of his line of sight. As you can see here, he breaks away and then he's going to do this large conal AoE right there that wind looking attack so yes make sure you stay away from that at all costs other than that he's pretty much a pushover he's really not that tough at all the tank will be able to control him for the most part but just remember when he breaks away and he runs away you want to run with him and you want to stay on his side keep up with your rotations pop out an LB do whatever you gotta do to take him down and you'll soon find yourself up against the next boss. So, here's the next boss. This is Koshi, or Koshai, or Koshal. I don't know what the hell his name is. But anyways, I'm not going to try anymore. This dude, you want to tank him towards the front of the door, pretty much where you entered. Some tanks will actually tank him near the cannons. I don't like that method because I like being able to get near the cannons because you're going to need them to use up against another dragon that's going to try and attack you from the back which we will be seeing a little later in uh, in this footage here against this fight because I was trying to more so focus my efforts towards this wyvern instead of manning the cannons because it seemed that our healer had the whole uh, cannon thing unlocked but you will actually see it other than that Koshal or Koshi the only other thing that he really does besides giving the tank grief is tossing out these tornadoes which are just fancy AOEs that move about so they move really slow so you definitely got that going for yourself here comes that dragon I was talking about so if you see him you wanna use this cannon and hit him you wanna use whatever cannon he's in front of and hit him which is nice and conveniently placed there if you don't do so he'll keep doing a room wide AOE that will do massive damage and in no time wipe the party He's the only other threat here though, it's him and tornadoes. Other than that, you're free to just keep wailing on him and you'll do just fine. Koshal really doesn't have a lot of HP and he's going to go down with ease. Again, if you have it, pop a limit breaker. I don't know why we're not doing that, but you can either do that or take him down the normal way. Either way you see fit, it shouldn't be much of a fight. And soon you'll find yourself at the last boss, which this was the guy trolling you in the last fight. This is Iskabind, or, well, I don't know, I think that's the way you pronounce his name. And he's just another badass looking dragon, but this time he has ice powers, and, well, he's really going to display them, trust me. So, 
At first, the fight pretty much seems standard. He's going to give you about, a, I don't know, maybe about 30 seconds or so to just deal as much free damage as possible. Alright, well, maybe not 30 seconds, but you get kind of a freebie. And then he's going to fly in the air and use this move called Quarterize, where he's going to light up a certain portion of the floor and use the move. The move hurts quite a bit, so you really don't want to get stuck in it like I did later on in this fight. So again, just keep at him, keep up with your rotations, and you'll see that his health depletes rather well. He also likes to do this room-wide AoE that is totally unavoidable, and he also does like to shoot AoEs at range DPS. I haven't seen if he does it to melee DPS or not, but I don't think so. I think it's specifically just for the range. So the tank won't have to do too much controlling on the ground. Just try and keep those AoEs away from the other party members because they actually form and stick around for quite a bit as you can see right there onto my right after he got done targeting me. But other than that, just keep dealing some more damage and before you know it, he's going to be back up in the air and then this time, he's going to be a lot more pissy as you are going to see in just a bit. So again, just keep up with your rotations. The healer is definitely going to be put to work in this fight. Alright, so here we are again, flying up in the air. And now we want to watch the ground. We want to dodge AoEs. These AoEs are actually going to stick around throughout the whole entire flight. And we want to be careful of that. Here comes the move quarter eyes on the other side of the screen. And then it's actually going to come onto my side of the screen. I should have actually ran to where the tank was, but instead... Like a fool, I stuck around. I almost got out of the way, but as you can see, it dealt some pretty substantial damage and also created the frostbite ailment, which I was cured of, but it's pretty much like a poison. It just keeps sapping away at your health. So be very, very careful uh, with the move quarter eyes because it really does serious damage. And actually, our healer uh, fell, but they will be brought back up. And it was just a lot more uh, unnecessary work. We all kind of made some mistakes here. Well, at least I know I did. I know that the healer did. And yeah, it just really wasn't pretty. But as you can see, I'm almost dead. And how I actually go on about surviving this, I really have no clue. But uh, the healer was brought back just in time to help bring back some of my life. And well, you know... We just kind of lucked out this round. The tank is actually going to use the LB here. It's probably better that he does than me because my LB is super weak. And he uses the LB there and that pretty much saves the day. You take out Iskabine and you're done. Well, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and thank you for helping me get back to the basics. That one was pretty rough, but we'll be back to redeem ourselves. We'll check you later.